talk about, I have this uh, New York Times article uh, about the uh, Pelosi uh, attack. And, uh, you know, New York Times, the reason why I like to pick on the New York Times is because, you know, th this is the, the quote-unquote paper of record. You know, these motherfuckers take themselves so seriously. Um, now, again, yeah, there was an assassination attempt on the Speaker of the House. Details came out over the last 24 hours yesterday. Uh, it seemed like it could have been a random act of violence. It was likely that it was, a, an, a, you know, an attempted assassination. But, you know, now we know uh, more info about the person who... Uh, nearly killed Paul Pelosi, and uh, and it's not good. So anyway, I want to read this New York Times article, see what the paper of record is saying about this incident. Pelosi attack highlights rising fears of political violence. The assault on the House Speaker's husband inside their home comes as threats against members of Congress have increased in recent years. So uh, once again, needs to be underscored, uh, that Nancy Pelosi was apparently on like a, a European like speaking engagement or some shit like she was going around she was doing she wasn't there right so my question right and and I'm not you know I'm not here to you know I obviously I, I do not endorse attacking politicians but like my question is if you decide to assassinate a politician right let like let you've made that decision part of that decision, is that you forfeit your life. You are you you have to dedicate or sacrifice your life to this task. Right? So the idea that someone is going to literally sacrifice the rest of their life to try to kill Nancy Pelosi and not even know that she's been in Europe for a week. I mean like that to me is I mean it's indicative of just the right wing brain, right? Like these motherfuckers are just so goddamn fucking stupid. So Members of Congress have watched warily in recent years as threats and harassment against them have crescendoed, privately worrying that the brutal language and deranged misinformation creeping into political discourse would lead to actual violence. I mean, privately worrying. I mean, like, when was it? 2016? When some motherfucker went into a goddamn pizza place in Washington, D.C. and was asking where the pedophile rape cult was? You know what I mean? So, yeah, this is uh, not new by any stretch of the imagination. But imagine if in 2016 Democrats got their fucking shit together and decided to actually fight, you know, fight. You know, actually fight against disinformation and against Republicans and try to prevent them from having power by any stretch of uh, any imagination. They cannot have any power. But Democrats are like, eh, you know, comma, ping pong. Oh, you know, Hillary, you know, is a pedophile rape Satan worshiper, you know. Oh, you know, and all this. And, you know, it's not that bad. Oh, Pelosi is sacrificing another couple kids. Oh, it's no big deal. And then, oh, no, now all of a sudden... Nancy Pelosi was almost assassinated. So, again, the the idea that... I'm not trying to blame Democrats here. It's not, I'm not trying to do a victim blaming here. But, like, we've got an entire political party, the Republican Party, that wants to murder everyone else. Now, and again, you might think that's hyperbolic. I present to you the world around us. Read some news every once in a while and you'll see some crazy ass shit. We got Republicans, armed fucking Republicans, guarding ballot boxes in Arizona... You know, we've got multiple instances of election office workers, uh, you know, being threatened, stalked, harassed, having their homes burglarized, broken into and threatened in other ways. You know, people even go to election offices to assault election workers. And again, Democrats have pretty much not talked about it at all. Why isn't Joe Biden going up there? Joe Biden did this big speech about MAGA Republicans and blah, blah, blah. Why isn't he going out there on a daily basis talking about this stuff? Democrats just don't care. They don't care. And this is what happens when you let this shit fucking fester and again i'm not trying to victim blame nancy pelosi here but again we have an entire party democratic party that sees and watches what the republican party does and just ignores it and that's a fucking problem that's a problem and that's what it, this is what it leads to the assault on Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul, inside their San Francisco home early Friday morning by an intruder who shouted, where is Nancy, and bludgeoned him with a hammer before being taken into custody by police seemed to confirm their worst fears, vividly bringing to life the acute danger facing elected officials and a rise of violent political speech. And it revealed the vulnerabilities and security around members of Congress and their families. Even a lawmaker as powerful as, and wealthy as Ms. Pelosi, who is second in line to the presidency, and has her own security 
detail as midterm congressional campaigns reach their frenzied final push. Nearly two years after supporters of former President Donald J. Trump stormed the Capitol on January 6, 21, inspired by his lies of a stolen blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, again, this shit has been happening for, you, you know, you can roll back the clock decades, but especially, I would say 2016 is when we hit, like, you know, the boiling point, and now the water is evaporating, and, you know, whatever was in the pot is now sticking and burning to the bottom of it. That's the part where we're at right now. Uh, quote, when we see things like what happened last night at the Speaker's home, when we see things like plastic kidnapped governors, when we see overt acts ramping up, we see, frankly, a whole host of indicators suggesting that we're really at a crisis point. Oh, you don't say, said uh, Peter Simi, an associate professor at Chapman University, who has studied extremist groups and violence for more than 20 years. Representative Ilhan Omar, a Democrat of Minnesota, who was among the most threatened members of the House, said the attack on Friday was a realization for her and her husband. Quote, we used to theoretically talk about what would happen if they found our children when they came to look for us what would happen if they found our loved ones when they came to look for us miss omar said on msnbc now we know now again these are the same motherfuckers that stormed into nancy pelosi's office on january 6th and threatened to kill her again there's people saying hang mike pence where's nancy where's nancy where's ilhan where's aoc on january 6th footage right and again this is what they wanted to do right so and again uh you know there's all kinds of information coming out about this guy. Um, you can read more about this in the paper of record here. But again, this is such a tepid response, right? Like the highest ranking Democratic official in the House was almost assassinated. And Democrats are like, oh, yeah, that's so bad. But like, are, are we going to talk about disinformation? Are we going to do anything about this? And then also, this also brings up what can Democrats do at this point? You know, what could they have done five, ten years ago is a different story, but what can they do now? The genie is kind of out of the bottle on this one. We've got around 20 to 25% of the country that are deranged, fucked up motherfuckers. Now, again, there's only two kinds of Republicans. Serial killers or people that wish they were serial killers and so they vote for other people to do their killing for them. Those are the only kinds of Republicans. That's it. There is not a single other possible, uh, you know, could you imagine? Imagine for a second here, a Republican that is not okay with killing people that disagree with them. They don't exist. They don't exist. They might pretend to exist, right? But they enact and vote for legislation that, again, they know, for example, uh, when it comes to health care, when Republicans go out there and Democrats in some instances go out there and say, hey, we don't need a universal health care system. They know that the poor, the disabled, a lot of minority communities are going to die uh, disproportionately because of that. And that's fine. That is externalized uh, murder in, in that sense. Right. So, again, find a Republican that is not either a serial killer, as in they are a killer and they are actively engaged in killing and murder or someone that wishes they could be. And so they vote for legal methods of execution. Right. So. Again, those, that's it. There's no other kind of Republican. And by the way, 20 to 25% of the country are those guys. Those fucking guys. What do we do about that? What do we do about that? Seriously, what the fuck? What do we do? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Now, again, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that, uh, of course, this guy... Uh, who tried to murder Nancy Pelosi, uh, was an avid follower of right-wing media, uh, even was a follower of Jimmy Dore. So again, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these people, this guy was a former Green Party guy. He was a Green Party guy that turned into a QAnon guy. And how does that happen? I don't know. Online disinformation is a problem. The internet, I hate to say it, it's real life. It's real. People go on here and they find shit and then all of a sudden they're fucking crazy motherfuckers that want to murder Nancy Pelosi, right? So again, some crazy ass fucking shit. I don't know what to do about the internet. How do we combat this information? Is it possible that just, you know, over the last 100 years, all the cuts and lack of funding to education created this? Were we fucked from the jump? Like when social media first started, uh existing right when youtube facebook twitter and google all started you know really gaining prominence right is it was it already too late right like what how could we have fixed this how could we have prevented the uh spread of disinformation so much right how do we do this i don't know i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest i have no idea how do you what do we do when 20 to 25 percent of the country wants to murder everyone else what do we do about that i don't know i don't know what to do about that all I know is that Democrats aren't doing enough. Um, maybe we need mandatory re-education. 
I don't know. Think about it. What does the average American even know? The average American has like a fourth grade reading level and they barely paid attention uh, to high school. Like, I mean, if you were to have every American take like a GED test, I guarantee you a significant portion would fail, right? So again, what do we do about this? Mandatory re-education sounds good in theory. How do how would it even work? How would we go about even getting people to be educated? How do we again? We live in an anti-intellectual uh, society. That's where we live. We live in a society where the average American not only is uninformed, but the concept of information is is like they're allergic to it, right? They actively avoid learning. They actively avoid finding out new information. They actively avoid studying. They actively avoid updating the way that they view the world. What do we do about this? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, all I know is that we're fucked and uh, it's not in the good dick way. So that's a shame.